Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick video on how I power my e-bike and uh, you know, I'm not recommending that this is the best way or better than any other way, it's just the way that I do it and uh, I came from RC Hobby uh, using larger multi-rotors and fixed wing aircraft and so I had you know, access to a number of existing LiPo battery packs and so it was easy for me, it was a no-brainer for me, it was no money for me to just use the lipo packs that I had. Of course, over the years I've refined the method and I've changed some of my setups and I just try and keep things as simple as possible. Uh, my main issue with uh, multi-cell, large capacity, lithium ion batteries using whatever 30Q or whatever Panasonic, whatever cell you want to use, the issue isn't about whether the battery is good or bad, it simply comes down to uh, for me, the way that I use the batteries, I have a number of e-bikes, I like to reconfigure batteries, I'm going to use different voltages or different pack sizes for different applications on different days, on different bikes, and so then therefore having to invest in a pack, a case, a battery management system, and so on and so forth for every pack, it just seemed really redundant for me. Uh, having a single battery pack was, of course, just for the amount of use that I have possible and you know waiting for a large capacity pack to charge up at low rates it's just crazy making so I never you know for some of the commuter bikes that I made for some of the lower voltage bikes that I made for city use or whatever the plastic cased batteries of whatever description seem to work just fine um, you know everything has a tolerance I guess I don't want to talk too much about that what I want to talk about is how I'm using the battery and what I'm using the battery for, and specifically in this case I'm using a 4.5 kilowatt system, depending on the pack that I use of course. I've got a 60 amp controller, I'm looking for 40 amps continuous, and I'm riding, you know, mixed trail from cross country to I guess what you might call downhill enduro style riding. I'm hitting big jumps, I'm doing distances, I'm doing all sorts of different things with those bikes. So I'm looking for a really high performance output, I'm looking for top power delivery and it again it seemed really obvious to me that the lithium polymer solution with a higher cell rating was going to deliver more punch in those situations and I don't think I'm wrong uh, given my, and of course I've not used the higher end Sanyo newest latest greatest cells, I had a couple of the older I guess uh, I'm not even sure who the manufacturer of those lithium ion cells were, but they were purple. And uh, they lasted, they were great. When I asked a lot from them, they failed. And so we moved on. <clears throat> so, battery management from the cell, I don't get in the way of my power delivery. I'm not even using a fuse. I have fusing within the controller, and of course the Chinese controller I'm using is so inexpensive that I'm not really even worried about reverse polarity or any of that kind of thing. Um, simple is better in my mind. Balance charging, I balance charge the cells when I get them right away. I charge them at very low rates on a number of occasions and I kind of break the cell in and I think that's essential for using any kind of battery really but the lithium polymers in my experience respond well if you tend to buy a decent brand so when they manufacture these zippy cells and I've had a lot of experience with them they tend to come well balanced so you're not looking at huge voltage swings or resistive loads between cells and that's what makes up a good battery to me um, they're also inexpensive which is great so in terms of charging I simply disconnect my series lead I connect the balance lead to my high-tech H4 charger which is a very lovely little machine and I can charge all four cells or in this case three independently and of course they're fully balanced and in that sense I don't have to worry. Now I tend to only balance charge them every now and again particularly if I brought the cell down below the 50% mark every now and again I'll bring it in at say 30% and in that case I'll then go ahead rebalance the pack, slow charge it, kind of baby it a little bit and just bring it up again to full capacity or close to full capacity because you're just going to get so much more out of these batteries if you buy more and use less of the capacity that comes within them, okay? So that's essentially how I do it. I just connect this up and the cool thing that I like about it is that halfway through the ride 
I can say, you know what, I got to my trail, I'm ready to get a little bit more power, and now I can connect these into a series connection and have instantly, from the batteries that I have on hand, an 18S battery. Great. I do a similar thing using a smaller 5003S battery, so that would be this broken into two pieces, and that allows me to run seven packs into a 21S, and I simply charge them as 6S batteries on this charger. So when I go to charge those 3S batteries, they're simply still in series, and I attach the balance lead so that I do have a balance connection, and boom. Done and done. With this battery, I'm looking at a 5000 MA battery, I'm getting about, you know, on average if I'm drawing 20 amps, well you can do the math, anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes of mixed use from those batteries, and it takes me, correspondingly, at an 8 amp charge rate, you know, half an hour, if they're depleted to 50% to charge them up, give or take, anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, let's say, and I can have my ETS. 5000 mA battery back charged and ready to go out the door. So by the time I'm done using this one, the cells that are on the charger are fresh and ready to go and I can then just keep looping through batteries throughout the day and I don't have to worry about doing the walk of shame when the batteries are dead or being lost in the bush somewhere with dead batteries or any various number of different situations that you guys could find yourself in. So there you go, straightforward lithium polymer with a really good balance charger there's numbers of these out there you can buy of course for each battery a corresponding small charger that you would use to charge that's a whole world I'm not gonna get into too much of that you can trust my recommendation of going with the high-tech charger I've been using this unit now for five years almost and it's just non-stop you can see in the background I've got a little 15 volt 20 amp power supply of course, any kind of, you know, 800 watt or 1000 watt computer power supply or any other kind of fixed voltage DC output is going to be just fine. You can, of course, connect it to a car battery, all that. Simple, bring it on the road, connect it to your car, charge anywhere you like. No worries. It is somewhat light, and of course, without the... I have done this on occasion, taken the charger with me on a trip, and then found somewhere like somebody's car to charge up. So that's a possibility, it doesn't happen often uh, either way. My main focus here is again high power delivery, compact, inexpensive, modular. Uh, I want to get it, what I want to talk about for a second is again in the larger pack specifically, when you're talking about a 72 volt uh, 30Q pack, let's say, and you have what 80, 90 cells all tied together. The possibility of some mechanical failure of one of those joints, of course, absolutely, without question. The possibility of a failure of the battery management system, unbeknownst to the rider, and of course, catastrophic failure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know what I mean? So eliminating any of those issues right from the beginning. And the major issue, again, being the number of cells in a densely populated pack having a thermal dynamic buildup causing chemistry change and then therefore shifting of the batteries themselves. Large voltage swings outside of their C capacity, even though this uh, series connection is there and of course you have enough cells to deliver the 40 to 60 amps, you're really asking a lot of the batteries and they're going to heat up. And that heat is going to cause chemistry changes and so on, therefore, and so on, and therefore. The other problem I have with battery management systems, of course, uh, if you're using it constantly and it's monitoring the upper and lower voltages of the cell and of course it's being responsible for managing the charge rate and so on and so forth, that also amounts to a tremendous amount of heat on the board. Heat on the board causes changes to the resistive elements and other capacitors, other things on the board. So over time you're going to experience a shift in what that battery management system recognizes as 4.2 volts. It may not be anywhere close to 4.2 volts or whatever voltage you're looking for. So here's my point. Eliminating that, centering it into a single unit, I can trust the battery management that comes with this. It's not in line with my ride. I'm not dependent upon it. If there is a problem with this unit, I can replace it. It's not going to leave me out stuck somewhere. And so then therefore, that's my thinking. That's my method. <clears throat> and take it or leave it. These are available inexpensive. These are production item. It's not as ghetto as maybe anybody thinks. And time-wise, let's just go through what I have to go through to load up my bike. So I take my battery pack. I tend to 
connect it. So we'll just start from, it's a good snug connection, it's nice. Waterproof, the XT90s, I'm sure you guys even use them. They can be annoying to detach sometimes. So the uh, foam layer, which is actually not here, so I'm just going to go through this quick. Put that in. This is the lead side going out of the battery. So I simply stick that through a hole in my bag. I connect the lead. Then I connect the other lead. Then I connect the final lead. And I have some foam that gets placed and I have a strap that conveniently holds all that down. So now, while I load that into the frame, the base, oh, can you see that? There you go. Simple, easy, straps onto the frame and it takes only moments and uh, really not that crazy. So there you go. Thanks for watching.